Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, friends. Hello, and welcome to this very jam-packed episode. We're going to be talking about May energies. We're going to be doing some dragon healing with this special friend, this special dragon stone that I have here. Um, who knows what else we're going to be talking about? We've got cards. We may have light language. We may have new, new guides showing up. Um, So let's go ahead and before we jump into that, if you're new here, just settle in. Thank you for joining me. We are a multi-faceted show. We do many things here on this channel and this is where we talk about the energies of the month ahead what might be coming up for you. We do it in the form of storytelling, channeled storytelling and metaphors and cards and all sorts of creative projects. We also do healing, um, star seed and shamanic and different types of Reiki and quantum energy healing. So just settle in, I kind of leave it up to my higher self and the guides that overlight this show to bring in what's most needed by Um, those of you that are watching this at any time that you might come in and settle into it. So settle in. If you're returning, thank you so much again for joining me back for another episode. I am excited to have you here. I am recording this on the day of the Taurus new moon solar eclipse. Very potent energies. And I think it's kind of like right about the time that the eclipse is actually happening. Um, Because for me, I think it was like three o'clock or something in the afternoon was when that was supposed to take place. So let's see what might be revealing itself um, as we step from one threshold into a new threshold. So first of all, let's come out of your regular space and join me in this magical place. As I wrap us all in love light and light love, inviting in the guides who overlight this show, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron. And I have like a slight switch, um, which is quite interesting. I have the Andromedans coming through rather than the, like the Pleiadians are always here, but I have the Andromedans coming through and I don't work with them a whole lot. So I'm interested to see what might come up Um, what they want to bring in or what they would like to share. They may be our spirit guide for the month. So I thought we would actually have our transformation candle lit. And um, prior to filming this, I'm getting a lot of 222 references, um, a lot of... um, references to twin hearts a lot of a lot a lot of references today to um, unions and um, so I will let that come through as it may because I know not everyone here is kind of on that soul flame or I don't want to even call it you know you guys know I don't really like to call it twin flame but it's on that soul not everyone's on the soul flame pathway so I'll make sure we have a balance of messages for everyone that might be watching so first what I wanted to show was our card so we are using my deck um no we don't need it <laughs> we don't need that we are using my deck Oh, Mercury retrograde is already, I know, I think we're in pre-shadow right now. So I'm having like these technical issues with just being able to pull this darn card up. Um, We're using my deck Loveland Oracle. It's still a work in progress, but um, I was guided to use it for our weekly videos. And so this video kind of comprises like 
our, our first week of May and our month of May. And so I want to, right, thank you. I don't know why that was important, but this is the card that's coming up for this time. So I was guided to use this deck, even though it's not physical cards yet. So you may not have been here last week, but it's still a work in progress. There's going to be 88 cards. And this was like the, I've divided it into the season. So this is the, the spring pack and I was going to order it. And then the shipping delays, were crazy and I was like just forget it I'm just gonna use it like it is right now and just keep working on it so this is the card that we drew for the month of May and I didn't even get to see the <laughs> the animation it's happening but the card is called bouncy ball I guess I could show you the back of the deck too it's gonna look like that I mean this is pretty set in stone so it's gonna look like this. This is the back of the deck. This is the spring pack. So the summer pack, the back of the deck is gonna be different. And you can choose to like, just get the spring pack, the 22, or when it's finally done, there'll be four packs, spring, summer, autumn, fall. And you can either just get them individually or you can choose to make them one big 88 card deck. So that's the back of the spring and then Back to Bouncy Ball, I just wanna read it. And then I'll read the channeled message that goes with it that'll be part of the little downloadable um, booklet. But this is, Karen worked up the nerve to put on her blue ball gown and dance around the room. She dreamed of her lover's arms around her waist as she danced to the song on the radio. So when I made, when I decided to use this deck like this without the actual physical cards, the guides were like, just use it in the order that you made the cards. So this is the second one, the second card in the deck. Bouncy ball has a big meaning for me personally. Um, on the show last year, we did on the road to um, the road to Lionsgate, we had a like a scavenger hunt, and you had to find three. Your guides helped you find three gifts or three three keys so to speak and blue bouncy ball was one that we found for the show and it sig it um it signified the pleiadians so starseed energy and specifically the pleiadians so i do find it interesting that the pleiadians are coming in here but the andromedans are coming in to help overlight this episode so let me read the channeled message for Bouncy ball. It's very short. We had a longer one last time, but this one is, there was nowhere to hide now, for it was all coming full circle. Karen had been waiting quite some time for this celebration, but she felt she must practice her dance even though she was fully ready. However, that did not make sense to her, for she failed at times to notice her true power. The blue bouncy ball moved into her field of vision and assured her that she really was ready. And so with her dreams strong in her heart and her spirit guides love and protection, she decided to dance. <laughs> what does that have to do with the month of May? <sighs> so it's all coming full circle. So there's a wheel turning and I think, did we talk about this? Oh, we did a, um, I did a new moon reading the other day and that was a big, uh, a big key theme in, we did a general collective reading and then I did pick a card. It's all together in one video. If you want to go back and check that out, I'll link it in this video. But, um, a key thing, theme, obviously the wheel is turning. Beltane is tomorrow as of the day that I record this. I really want to do something for Beltane, but I don't know, I'm just not feeling it as much as I usually do. I need to get more of the, that spirit, apparently. But a wheel's turning, and Karen, who's in this, in this card, dancing, has been waiting quite some time for this celebration, but she still feels like she's not ready because it says she felt she must practice her dance even though she was fully ready. So it seems like for some of you, as things are coming full circle and you're ready to step out on a new path, a new journey, a 
whatever that could be, a new partnership, a new career, you still feel like you're in practice mode and your guides are saying you're completely ready for this upgrade, this change, or whatever this might be, this partnership, this new role. But for Karen, even though her guides keep telling her that, she says, says, however, that did not make sense to her for she failed at times to notice her true power, that she was the magician and she, it, well, she is the magician. She's the creator of her own reality. And so this blue bouncy ball, which is a, signifies for her, her spirit guide. So in her mind's eye, she saw like a blue bouncy ball. And she's like, when I see like this blue orb, I know it's my spirit guides. And blue orbs, typically, when it's spirit guides, usually, depending on the blue, um, if it's like an indigo or whatever, it's like Archangel Michael coming in saying, it's time for you to live your life's purpose. Um, oh, he wouldn't point and do that. <laughs> He's like, it's time, time for you to move into more of your life's purpose. So for some of you, that could be you're just now figuring out what that purpose is. Others of you, this is a huge upgrade to what you've been doing. So it's like an add-on, it's like something new and exciting, maybe to get you out of like a rut that you've been in, but you're gonna start receiving this month, starting this month as the wheel turns, because you're ready, because you've done so much work, you're going to start receiving um, visions and ideas and your guides are going to start presenting you with opportunities to do maybe something different and up your game a little bit. And so with her dream strong in her heart, because for the longest time now, I mean, we've had this channel for four years now, and for the longest time we've been talking about don't give up on your dreams. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's not just me that's been saying that, right? You can try to tune in to different <clears throat> readers or different, you know, people, different motivational speakers, because I don't really just consider myself a reader, I'm kind of a spiritual teacher and motivational speaker more than I am a reader, although I do create the cards and I read them, but that I would not consider that like my main role. My main role is that I'm a bringer of the light here to help you all with your ascension and your whatever that means. And that trickles down into all these other things. But if you have stood strong and persevered and not given up on your dream, then with that dream still strong in your heart and with your spirit's guides guiding you, whoever that is, whatever realm you work with, with their love and protection, she decided to dance. So she's going to decide to go for it, whatever that, whatever that means to you. Um, so let's <clears throat> pull a few more cards to kind of tease that out a little bit more, get a little bit more specific messages. <clears throat> and I just feel a very interesting energy today. I do have to say this time period, Typically around Beltane, you know, I'm, I'm usually more like, whoo, let's go around the dance around the Maypole and we do a shamanic journey to the Beltane fire. And maybe we are going to do that. But this particular day feels very, it's not like it shouldn't be somber. It feels somber, but it shouldn't be. It's supposed to be a celebration. And I think that's another thing that the guys keep trying to bring across is, um, they keep saying like, don't give up on your dream. So let's use Pleiadian power. This is my other deck. And I wanna just, ah, I wanna just get some, a few cards from here to see if there's anything else. We are gonna do a healing. The water is still very strong. So I feel like this Piscean, the um, transits or the um, alignments of the different planets in Pisces, a lot of the outer planets and stuff in Pisces, um, is really overshadowing some of the fire. And maybe the fire is going to come in <laughs> strong like a couple days from now is what they're saying. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want to be bowled over by fire, but they're saying you're going to be bowled over by passion and creativity. So I feel like there's this integration point here of this moon and what's happening. And then after this, because it's usually like two to three days after the moon phase, the new moon or the full moon, those energies kind of wane a little bit and you integrate them during that time. 
And then maybe we get like this <laughs> belting on the back end kind of thing where we have this passion and drive and all the things that were delivered as part of this eclipse start to take hold. Okay, this just jumped out and fell down. <clears throat> okay, dolphin angels. These are spirit guides. They are here to assist you by sharing deep wisdom and intense love and joy. They keep coming out and it's more water. It's very watery. I did, I do notice too, like all the things I picked for this show, even though this is May, even though tomorrow is Beltane, like this deck is bluish Pleiadian-ish color. I want to use this deck. This is the new one. I'm in love with the art on this deck. This is very blue. The healing stone that wanted to come through is a dragon. He's a water dragon. He looks very watery. Um, so I don't feel the fire so much yet. And here's what she, here's what's on top of the Labyrinth of Dragonshire deck, which is my hand-painted deck, is the Samhain card, which technically, I guess, <clears throat> in the Southern Hemisphere today is Samhain. And this is the Samhain. This card came up in the New Moon reading as well. And it's more um, soul soul work. So you may have woken up this morning. I don't know when you're going to listen to this. You can listen to this whenever you want. But when I woke up this morning, I was like, it's supposed to feel more fun. I don't know. I just still felt like I was clearing stuff that needed to be cleared before this eclipse. So we've got dolphin angels are here to help you. Huh. All right. Let me get one more. Because this is the month of May. This is not just today. I feel like this is very interesting. Cassie the Heart Fairy. When you know where your heart is, when you feel the magic within, then all is right in your world. This is just what we talked about, like keeping that dream in your heart. She looks very watery-ish. Even though she's a heart fairy, she looks more throat chakra-ish. Let's see. Oh, and this one again. Okay, we are getting repeating cards. I get the same, either the same messages from the new moon reading, playing it very strong. Like it's not just, it starts with the new moon and maybe kind of the energies with this moon obviously play out for the rest of the, the month and beyond. But this one is child's play. This one is close your eyes, he said, covering her heart-shaped sunglasses with his hands you count and I'll hide. And I think when I pulled this the last time, I always say this is like our bringers of my bringers of the light, Dakar and Abigail. They are soul flames, um, divine counterparts, and they like to play, you know, they like to play games. And so this is kind of like their naked hide and seek game. Although it's at the beach, there's beachy, more water. Mm, let me go ahead and get a Labyrinth of Dragonshire card to just clarify each one of these. Even my voice, like my throat chakra, <clears throat> my voice feels all of a sudden, it didn't start until I was starting to record this episode. My throat sounds all and feels all weird and scratchy. And it, it feel, I feel like hoarse, like I'm gonna lose my voice. And that was not um, happening prior to turning on the camera. I found it very interesting. I will share us watching a video. Kino Taro is one of my favorite readers. I mean, she's such an old soul. But she's young, but she's such an old soul. And she's so, like, perceptive with her readings. I just love her. And she was read doing a reading. And right in the middle of her reading as she's talking and telling what the cards mean, I just started, like, crying and crying and crying and crying. For no, like, I'm like, I don't know why I'm crying. And then about 30 seconds later, she goes, I am just, for some reason, just crying. <laughs> it's just like, this is so funny. So who knows, you know, maybe I was crying because she was crying, she was crying because I was crying. It's like we're all connected, right? So this horse, so going back to my voice, like maybe somebody watching this has got a sore throat or has having some throat chakra upgrades or has something they need to say and just can't seem to say it yet. And at the, maybe at the thought of even saying it, the, your throat is kind of closing up and you feel like you're going to lose your voice. 
as are your guides are saying all is well you may not think you're ready but you are I just saw the release control card go by in this deck because this is all hand drawn so every letter is spells out lab if I put it up put them all down well they're all wonky in here but if I put them all down it spells labyrinth of dragonshire but <clears throat> let's see what just fell out Oh, we've been getting, see this, I swear this is like a mirror of this reading we just did the other day. This is the A card, which is all is not as it seems, illusions surround you, wait. I find we get this card a lot when there's a full moon or a new moon, um, kind of like you kind of have to wait, they're saying for the dust to settle before you take any action. And so maybe you were thinking of kind of jumping forward and saying something to someone. And then your guys were like, whoa, calm, calm down. Um, you need more information first before you move forward. Um, you don't have all the answers yet. <clears throat> They're saying the wheel turns slowly sometimes for faster for some than others. And you don't want to get ahead of yourself before the other person is ready to hear what you have to say. So maybe you were stopped with this like hoarse, scratchy throat. <laughs> what does that have to do with the month of May? They're saying more information is to follow at the Scorpio full moon. So you, oh, and then the card that's here, right as I set the deck down on top is full moon. Something is being revealed. So you are being asked, keep that dream in your heart. Oop, don't cover the microphone. It did, it covered the microphone. Hold off on what you're gonna say. Keep that dream in your heart and allow yourself a little bit more time to integrate all the energies that are coming through with this eclipse and then come the, for those of you watching this now, it'd be this Scorpio, the next eclipse is a full moon in Scorpio. If you're watching this, like after that, it would be whatever full moon, whatever the next full moon is that follows, you know, this video. But you don't, I'm just tired of hearing that there's healing that has to be done. But there's more, they keep saying there's more information to follow. You don't have everything you need to move forward yet because the other person is getting ready to hear what you have to say. And in order for them to be ready to hear what you have to say, we have to wait until the next full moon. Wow, so there's a strong communication vibe, hence all the blue going on with this month of May. So it could be, I'm, I'm just asking like, oh, is this specific to any one type of scenario? And they're like, it's all types of communication. Um, plus, I don't have the dates, but we are going to be here in a Mercury retrograde and it ends on my birthday. I'm like, what's the significance of that? So there'll be a Mercury retrograde here in the month of May. Ends, I thought I heard it ends on June 3rd, which is my birthday. So I don't know. So if you're hearing this now, then you've got to wait to move forward until the full moon in Scorpio, till after the full moon in Scorpio, you're being asked to wait. And they're saying that you're very strongly connected to your guides and you've been asking them like, can I move forward now? Can I contact this person? And your guides have been like, no, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. And you've been getting kind of anxious and because you have so much you want to say and the, they're saying that if you tried to say it now it would it would fall flat it wouldn't have the same oomph, <laughs> oomph that it's gonna have if you okay this is making me want to go see this card it doesn't have the same oomph it would have as if you were to wait why not I want to know now if you were to wait, that doesn't make sense. Hold on, I have to see something here. <laughs> Where is this? Oh, oof. <laughs> um, 
Okay. The reason I'm saying that is I said oomph and there's a card in the deck, in the Loveland deck that I created <laughs> called Dragon of Oof. Like it's a land, it's a part of Loveland. I don't like that. Color is hard to see. But I'm going to read the message and I have not channeled the message in for this yet, but the message on the card says certain land masses in Loveland take on a magical shift. If you can see them with your master eyes, you are a child of the dragon lines and you are being called. So this person, why is it, it's about two people. It really seems to be about, the, the month of May seems to be about a conversation between two people. Regardless of the topic of the conversation, it's kind of like you're the person initiating the conversation with whoever it is, whether, whether it be an employer, whether it be a, a romantic partner, whether it be a friend, there's some conversation this month that needs to be had. But your guides are saying, even though you, you're you're kind of back and forth like you feel like you're ready to have the conversation and your eyes are saying technically yes you are ready to say something there's no more work you have to do to communicate what needs to be communicated or to have the conversation but the other person on the receiving side of the conversation has more work to do on themselves first and it's not that they're not ready to hear what you have to say the guides are saying they are they're they're ready but the timing is important here and this card is about dragon ley lines which then speaks to me about the ascension process um, in this card this person is able to see use their master eyes to see dragon lines in the land. And so it sounds like, and the guys just said your, your person is not, they're, they're ready to hear what you have to say, but the ascension process is still happening for them. And that the information that you relay will be taken in better context if you can wait for this shift and this upgrade to occur and it's not even it's not okay i think i get it <laughs> it's not even that the that the person has to upgrade it's like gaia has to upgrade too so this feels very very relationship based um do i even go there Okay, no. They want me to come back and do a separate episode about divine counterparts and soul flame unions. And, but suffice it to say that there is a, we've talked about this before, there is a schedule, a overarching beyond galactic schedule for different types of soul flame unions to come into connections with each other this year and they've already been happening but for some of the higher vibe ones they've been happening on a staggered um a staggered plan is what's being shared and Gaia herself has to be able to hold the frequency of these soul flame unions within the holographic uh like the ley lines and the the grid lines, the grids have to be able to hold that higher frequency because when the two, when the unions come together and the two merge, not, we're not just talking about the two merge like in a sexual union or whatever, but when the two come together, when the heart map is finally complete, we've been talking about this for so long, um, it's going to create like a massive, um, it creates like an over, an, oh, oh wow, it creates like an oversoul around the two parties. I've drawn this before, um, the, the union gets like its own soul or its own oversoul, its own energy, and that becomes like super charged, super powered. And so the grid lines in different locations, these unions are happening all over the planet. 
and the grid lines have to be able to handle so much like over soles coming together and things powering up and there's more energetic um there's a, a, another gateway i think happening towards i forgot the dates is it the 13th to the 19th of may i think and that one holds a huge um, galactic influx of energies to further upgrade the planetary ley lines. And then at that point, oh yeah, that's giving me big chills. At that point, the next wave of these very high soul flame unions is able to start coming together. The heart map will be finished and the two can come in contact with each other in the 3D. It doesn't mean you're not in contact in the five in the five D, but um, you can come in contact in the three D, and you will be given you. It sounds like you, whoever you are watching this, is the one that is making the communication, or you could be. You don't. You don't. And or the you could be the on the receiving end. You could be watching this and be the person who's waiting for some sort of communication from someone, and just know that you're ready. The other soul is ready. It's just a matter of time and it has nothing to do with anything that you've done wrong or the other person's done wrong or nobody's fallen off their path. Um, it's just the timing of the planetary ascension process has to be able to absorb the high frequency vibe of these power soul couples coming into contact with each other. Wow, okay, that was a whole big monad of information um, that seems to be, we could break down that monad of information in a quite, a quite a few ways, meaning that even if you're not part of a soul union, soul flame union, even if you're not waiting on some divine counterpart or something, that you have, I see so much green when I close my eyes, you have, um, you're ascending, you're being, your individual chakras and so forth are also being upgraded as part of the same thing we just talked about as part of this planetary ascension process, as part of this gate that's coming up here in May prior to and as part of the next eclipse in Scorpio. Um, there's some big, big upgrades happening there as well. And it's like, well, I know every time I turn around, there's a gate and there's a, there's a portal and there's a thing. It's like, why is this one so important? It's like, well, it's important for you in this now, just like some other gate or portent or portal would be important for you at the time you hear the message. The message is being delivered because the information is important for you to know in this now. Um, yes, it's, it's one in a series of many, upgrades and realignments and wheels turning and all of that but the time that you hear this information this download that I'm sharing with you is when you need that activation and you could get activated in many different ways you could just your chakras could get an activation just from the healing that we're going to do or just from hearing you, I just delivered what they're calling a monad, which is a very high level packet of information that can be unpacked into many different levels or different meanings or levels of truth for different people that are listening to it. So you, we always say, you know, take what resonates and leave the rest. That was to me a very big bunch of information and it had activation codes in it for different parties listening for different reasons. So take that as it comes and break out what matters to you, what's, what speaks to you out of what I shared. And they're saying, now we can move on. <laughs> but I think we got time frames in there and um, we got a lot of other stuff. And if you are part of this whole Soul Flame Union group, um, you know, we'll, we'll decide, I'll have the guides help me decide like, how we deliver if in any additional information to you about that that you need to know um, for the month ahead. All right, I've got one more card. Uh, two more cards. Oh, this dang card wanted to come out. So 
The last card, this card was staring at me the whole time, strong boundaries. And it's coming out with third quarter moon. You're almost to the end. You know what, guys, if you guys have been with me for a while, you know I don't like this card. Because it's like, well, am I really almost to the end? Um, so why strong boundaries and you're almost to the end coming out together? Yeah, I think it's like just stay strong in your knowing of who you are and what you came here for, what you came to do. Don't let anything pull you off your path um, because it's saying like you don't have all the answers yet. You still got, in this case, by the time we record this, you've got a couple more weeks to wait for a full moon. Um, Why do you want me to say that? Why do you want me to say, why strong boundaries around your almost to the end? So, okay, I get it. Well, it took me a minute. It's like, so don't give up now because it has been, we have been saying this, you're almost to the end for a really long, I feel like for years, this card has been coming. I don't know when I created this deck, but I feel like it just comes out periodically and I kind of scoff at it like, yeah, all right, whatever, I'm almost to the end. Of this but it doesn't feel like it which is how I felt this morning when I woke up I got really down um, you know everyone's emotional body it just I got I think it was a lot I had to clear and I got really down this morning I was like forget this work I'm doing you know it's not going anywhere um, you know it's not growing as fast as I want it to um, relationships aren't coming coming in that you keep telling me you're gonna come in um, things aren't changing. You know, I've been on this, it's seven year cycle. I've been on this seven year cycle with whoever he is, Saturn or Pluto or whoever. And it's like, I was just kind of fed up today. And it took, it did, it took a while. It took most of the morning for me to regain my vibration. I had to do a lot of meditation. I had to get a Reiki clearing. I had to listen to some of my favorite um, readers on YouTube, um, Consciousness Evolution Journey, like D um, and Kino and a couple of other people before I was finally like, okay, I think I'm ready to do the May video because I can't like come to here to speak to y'all and be like all like that, right? Like who would want to watch that? And so a lot cleared out and, and it's, it's no coincidence that it all cleared out before the eclipse happened. So you may have been in the same boat. It's kind of like, stay strong. Um, you know, I do hear a lot of like, oh, there's, you know, dark energy against unions and dark energy, you know, trying to thwart plans um, of, you know, light workers and so forth. And you know, and the guides are just saying there's different levels of truth. So you take it how you feel it in your heart. If And I, I think that's kind of slightly different than what we've said before, because I think, you know, we've said like, well, law of attraction says, you know, if you're, if you're high vibe, then why would something that's not high vibe be kind of coming towards you? And it's like, well, it's not coming towards you specifically, but there's a higher level of truth, kind of more of an inner, inner school teaching that says like, there's still dark agendas running and it's possible that there could be some out there that are, you know, trying to thwart light workers' plans. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, all right, so is there anything more to say there? No. So we want to, let me just finish on a card from this deck because I'm really loving, I love, you guys know, like I do draw my own decks, but I swear my art is like a work in progress. I don't even know if I'd call it art at this point, but I put them on my decks because they resonate with me. And if they resonate with me, then I'm hoping they'll resonate with some of you all. And obviously they do because you all buy my decks. But um, this art, oh my gosh, this I love this artist. So this is Scott Howden. We're going to do one card to finish and then we'll do our dragon healing. So I've just been playing with this little deck. Didn't think it hit the... Oh my goodness. All right. What did we get here? 
the card we got to finish out the month of May. Oh, oh, it's so cute. I love all these cards. 20, <laughs> 23 Cat's Whiskers. I have to read from the book because he does cute little stories like I do in my stuff. It looks like Catwoman. Oh my God, and that cat's face. And her eyes, it's very blue, you'll notice. Very blue and same colors we've been talking about. All right, this is 23, which is a five. Oh, you guys, I swear. I can't make this stuff up, I really can't. Um, all right, so the meaning of the card She's the cat woman. Oh my God, no wonder they were showing me this. Holy shit, okay, sorry. Before I read this, because I'm gonna tell you what it says in just a second. When I was getting ready to film this episode, I was looking for the cards on the software that I use, and my, pa my dang pages app opened by itself again. Well, it didn't open by itself, but my finger will just, you know, my higher self will just move my finger and it'll just go do something. And it opened pages, which is where I write all my books. And I'm like, I don't want pages. And Tambor and Jameson was there. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Tambor and Jameson was there. Here I'm crying again. And Tambor and Jameson, if you haven't read it or you haven't been following the show for a while, is a story about like a badass girl. <laughs> Tambor, she's a bringer of the light. She's a star seed from off planet, obviously off planet. Um, she is very, very powerful. Take these metaphors for yourself. I just saw 4114, which is mirrored energy. She's very badass. Doesn't have to be female. You don't have to be female to get this. But she, oh my God, these guys who over like, you guys are so cheeky. She goes to work for the Bringers of the Light, which is our light bringers. It's the series of books I write about the people who do light work. And they assign her a familiar who's a hawk, whose name is Jameson. He goes, this is so crazy. And so at some point, Jameson realizes like, I'm in love with Tamber. I mean, she's just not ready for love. She's just like, I. she doesn't even really have love in her heart. She's very, She's very cunning, she's very powerful, she's very like kill first, ask questions later. And he and he realizes in working with her as her familiar, he's a hawk, that he's in love with her. And he goes back to the bringers of the light and he says, I can't be a hawk familiar anymore. I have to show myself to Tambor. And so he denounces like the familiar status. He's like, I'm not doing that. He tells the high core, their boss, like, I'm not doing that anymore. And he changes into a human and he goes to pursue Tambor. So this card is like this cat woman and her cat familiar, right? And the book says, cat's whiskers, nurture allies and partnerships, unity, cooperation, collaboration, community. And Scott writes, I wanted my portrait of cat woman and her trusty companion, Fluffy, to capture a sense of their unity. Catwoman with her, I swear this is so synchronistic. Catwoman with her protective embrace and Fluffy with his don't mess with us stare suggest that they both have each other's backs. I imagined my devious duo in their hidden lair devising a mischievous plan. Perhaps a dime, this is so timbre, perhaps a diamond heist or an audacious raid on the fish market. Whether they are in the middle of a cunning caper or prowling the rooftops, they know that they can rely on each other through thick and thin. That's these freaking unions, you guys. Our lives can be tough and challenging. Having others that we can count on to offer assistance, advice, friendship, and protection helps us thrive and survive. And maybe it's not a union for you. Maybe it's you and you're familiar. Just being aware that there are people who have our backs, could be your guides, can reduce stress, boost our confidence and resilience. <laughs> oh my God, are you guys crying right now? Because my sounds just changed and the water and the waves are so loud. <laughs> Holy shit, this is crazy. Just being aware that there are people who have our backs can reduce stress boost our confidence and resilience and encourage fruitful collaborations and a sense of connectedness. Just as a cat can leap farther than a human, 
We make each other more whole by sharing our individual strengths. Gail Godwin even sung, the quote is, May their having each other make more of them both. I swear that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Oh my God, the waves. I love it. I love everything about this reading. All right, let's do this little healing here. So I'm going to bring in this dragon. Holy smokes. Like we need any more water. <laughs> okay, so this dragon is coming in to help balance out emotions. Because it's getting way watery up in here. To help heal your heart space. If you want this healing, you just take a deep breath. Let's breathe in. Let's do our Pleiadian pick-me-up where we breathe in love and breathe out love three times. You can go at your own pace. Let's breathe in love. Breathe out love. This kind of opens you to receive. <laughs> Friggin' waves. <laughs> Breathe in love. Breathe out love. Breathe in love. Breathe out love. <laughs> the fleeting blue ball is making me laugh. All right. So this dragon is coming in to offer you healing and protection whatever you need most in this now this dragon is very grounding energy even though he's watery water based he's going to like wrap himself around you not in a constricting way but in a comforting protective way <clears throat> and he's going to start releasing if you will allow it <clears throat> but the throat releasing anything that no longer serves you just by <clears throat> you agreeing to release it he can absorb it and then he's going to take it out to the ocean Take a deep breath. All right. I want to thank you all so much for joining me here. That's all we have. This is going to be an interesting month of May. I think next time I see you, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing. But um, I will see you all again soon. Sending you all so much love peace, comfort, and alignment. Stay true, stay strong. You've got this. We'll see you again soon. Take care.